This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorga and Sorga Tron on the Twitter here. And this is the show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling. Uh, and of course, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, past episodes, and so much more uh, going on over there. And please support everything over at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of the people that we do have on this show are represented over there. If you do a little search there, you can find them there over or over at the Indie Wrestling Network, Indie Wrestling Network, so you guys can go check that out too to support wrestling. And also, if you have any questions for anybody announced or anybody uh, that you would like to see on this show, please hit us up at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com or over on four one two two zero six WMS zero. We do like some suggestions out there as well so uh <laughs> our guest this week is somebody who is uh no 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 stranger to the camera first of all and uh we, we and also no stranger to the studio he's been joining us on the Brohemoth uh, invitational video game streams we've been doing on twitch and everything too but the successful saint yeah jordan styles with us today such excitement he's, he's brought the emmy me. if you're with oh, us yeah. on audio yes that is a real emmy Oh yeah, he we'll, has. T- we'll talk about the Emmy here in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I just cut myself there. That was terrifying. <laughs> I, it is sharp. That is, it is the, that very is, that's sharp. Another yeah. thing we were we were like one time you you had left it here while you went on an errand, <laughs> and uh, we're just like, wow, you could really stab somebody with this. Yeah, that's like this, a potential murder weapon. It's a great weapon. It's like it blinds you with the light first of all. Yes. Whenever you get attacked, and then you need to shiv a little bit, you can get that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't suggest it. I'm pretty sure blood doesn't come out too well on this video. Yeah, no, ones. no. Well, oh. Sooner or later, I'm sure you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we like a little bit of an icebreaker. I got, I, we got plenty we're going to talk with you about here. Uh, but uh, what was your first memory of pro wrestling? Oh, so first memory of pro wrestling um, was actually the Hell in a Cell in Pittsburgh with oh. Mankind and Undertaker when I was a kid. I only remember it because it terrified me to death <laughs> because had to be about uh, I forget what year it was, but I was a young kid and seeing a grown man being tossed off of a jacking scaffolding. Were you there live? <laughs> I was not there live. Um, my mother had recorded it on VHS for me at the time. Mm-hmm. Whenever they were going through the uh, the pay per views and just seeing that happen, I like ran out of the room crying. Jeez. Came back, saw his tooth in his nose, and I'm like, "This is terrifying. I want to do this." <laughs> <laughs> It was such a weird way to trigger a love of professional wrestling. And ever since then, I'd kept watching it you know, daily, anytime I could, as many promotions as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, like every once in a while, me and my friend Ernie, we always watch uh, like a WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And whenever Flo Rider comes on, we start playing FIFA or wrestling or whatever. But it's always a great time. That's awesome. So so you, you, you stayed with it. Uh, when did you convert from the, you know, watching into like, I want to get into this? Oh, it uh, was actually really recently. Um, ever off and on, of course, I always wanted to do it. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be a pro wrestler. Okay, now I'm going to be a football player. I still want to be a pro <laughs> wrestler. Okay, now I'm in front of a camera and all that stuff. But um, about two-ish years ago, I got back into it when I went to a PWX show mm-hmm. with uh, Ron L, uh, who actually worked at WPXI with me at the time. He was that's, like, the, you gotta, that's the Rev Ron the Hunt. The Rev Ron Hunt, yes. Yep. Uh, he brought me to his show. At PWX, which I didn't even know, like at that time, that there were Pittsburgh independents. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't keep up that as well as I could have, obviously. But um, he brought me to the show, and I was just so surprised being that close to the action, and it rewoken everything in me. I was like, I need to do this again. I'm seeing people cheering. I'm seeing, you know, the emotion happening in the ring, and it was a great show mm-hmm. that I went to. I mean, definitely go to the shows, of course, now because they're still great. But I, it just flicked some, like flicked the switch in me again. So they just kind of see that. So where did you go from there? Uh, you know, how, how did you kind of discover this training and, and getting into that? I guess through Ronell, right? So, yeah, um, a bunch of weird, <laughs> crazy steps led to me uh, training um, from PWX. It happened whenever they had went to RWA. Mm-hmm. Um, originally before that, we were actually his choir. 
Uh, it was it was a random thing too. Like we weren't part of the show. Yeah, we uh, we told him as a joke one day we were going to show up in choir robes, and we did. Me, my buddy shoes, and his mother I were think, in the front row. I think I was going around this time uh-huh. uh, to PWX because you know just just you know catching whatever we can right. Mm. And and I just like why, why why is the crowd in these robes and masks? <laughs> Out of nowhere, like before we were so cheery, we had tambourines, we were just annoying. Mm-hmm. And at first, like people, they didn't know if we were in the show or not, because I mean, obviously we weren't at that time, but they would trash talk us like we were. Yeah. So I would trash talk them back, obviously a lot worse than I would do now, <laughs> because <laughs> nothing's going to happen to me at this point. But um, I mean, that was another step to getting me into that. Uh, fast forward a couple months or so, um, they went to RWA and we came out. Um, as a surprise at the RWA show, putting Chris Taylor through a table and all that fun stuff. And I originally decided at that point I was just going to stay there, but I needed training because I wanted to get more involved into what was going on. Right. So I ended up going back to PWX to train. Mm-hmm. Um, and the rest is history. There you go. Uh, so, you know, so you, you had this interesting, we were talking about a little bit beforehand. You had this interesting, like, you had some involvement, at least on the side, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like you got to come out at the shows, had that opportunity while you were actually, you know, getting the formal training going mm-hmm. on. Um, you know, and, and and most most I think get the training and then having then them, like on, those yeah. spots like that. Mm-hmm. You know, how did that kind of inform you as you were uh, kind of you know growing into it and getting the training? Well. Um... I'm always a listener and a watcher. I love yeah. to people watch. I love to listen to whatever. Like as much as I talk on camera, I'm usually silent <laughs> backstage, just listening. Um, it helped me figure out the dynamics mm-hmm. of a lot of stuff. You know, there are certain things that you do during a show. There's certain things that you don't do. You know, you don't bring fans to the back with you. You, know, you don't do all these other things that could hinder or hurt the product. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those things I learned early on, even before training, you know, I learned jargon, like, you know, what a spot is and all this other stuff. So I think that helped prepare me when I finally stepped in the ring and first started doing my bumps. Um, I feel like I had a little bit of a leg up with training in that aspect that I knew a little bit, you know, to get an extra step ahead. Excellent. So, uh, tell us a little bit, you know, getting into the training, like what, was it surprising when you got to see all that kind of actually went into it? Yeah, I, I thought for sure when I first started, I was like, I'm just going to get slammed and that's it. I'm done. I didn't realize that there were promos involved. I've always seen them, but I mm-hmm. thought someone else did them for you. I didn't realize, you know, the storylines involved. I didn't realize all the aspects that go into a show. There's a lot that goes on backstage that people don't see. Mm-hmm. Um, that goes on the show, especially, I mean, you yourself, you know, you know about from the film aspect of it, which, you know, I have experience with that as well. There's a whole lot that goes up leading up to the show, just not even on the show day. And to see all that was definitely eye opening, but it was eye opening in a good way. It wasn't like, Oh no, I'm terrified. I'm never doing this again. You know, it just it made me strong and made me hungrier mm-hmm. to do this stuff. Uh, let's talk about it. So, so you are the successful saint. Yes. Jordan Styles, The undefeated, uprise, successful saint. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the undefeated, uprise, successful tour still continues, and I'm That's so right. happy about that. That's exciting. right. The third uprise event, and, and mm-hmm. got that too. Uh, not, not so much with the other promotions. But <laughs> <laughs> no, not so much. Not at all. <laughs> uh, tell us about the development of, you know, where, where does the successful saint come from? Uh, the successful saint is 100% an amplified version of the negative parts of me (laughs) (laughs) for absolutely sure. Um, That wasn't even the first character I was going to go with. Um, Whenever we were starting out the pulpit, uh, I wanted to be the sin killer, Jordan styles. And it was going to be this weird, creepy, almost Christian blackish character where I would only go after the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Oh, you represent wrath. You're dead. You represent gluttony. You're dead. And I would just be monotone and angry and I wouldn't speak. I mean, most people who watched uh, the pulpit grow up saw me just in a mask, mm-hmm. never speaking. I was always monotone. That was basically what it was going to be. Um, my trainer, Brandon K, kind of was like, all right, if you're going to do this, you got to be a certain look. You got to be a certain way. Is there anything else you can do? <laughs> I was like, well, I have an Emmy. I have, um, I talk a lot and I'm kind of funny, I think. I like to think I'm funny. And he was like, well, The best part about a character is sometimes it could be an amplified version of you. So take what you do, turn it up to a 10, maybe a 20, and go from there. And from that point, 
I bought a couple suits. Um, my Emmy has gotten a lot more violence than I'm pretty sure it's attended. <laughs> and I've been successful ever since. It, it seemed like it, it definitely seemed like it was a little bit of a spin off of the pulpit thing, right? Mm-hmm. It was. So, yes. so it kind of fit from that and grew from that. Mm-hmm. So you, you had a nice base kind of going into it. I did, it. yes. I had a lot of base going into this. I had a lot of examples to look forward to. Um, given Ron L. credit, he definitely helped me mm-hmm. a lot getting through those steps and flushing out details of the character. Why does he do this? Why does he do this? Why does he do that? That type mm-hmm. of stuff. Right, I still hate the guy, but it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell me about it. The Emmy is real. The Emmy is for most definitely real. For those that are real. curious, the Emmy is real. Why do you have an Emmy? Okay, so um, I work for the new station, WPXI Channel 11. Watch mm-hmm. it. Watch watch Channel 11. If you watch Channel 2, I will find you. I will. Mm, I'll do stuff. But uh, uh, Disclaimer, Main Street Matt works for Channel 2, and we have a little <laughs> bit of internal turmoil here because of it. <laughs> <laughs> So um, uh, there was a big story going on a couple of years ago, the PWSA water crisis that was mm-hmm. happening. People, I'm not sure, were you guys affected up here? Uh, no, we're, we're not, not this side of the city, though. Perfect, yeah. Um, a lot of people were losing water. Uh, there was massive lead levels in the water, almost to the Flint, Michigan level, which is, you never think you would have that in Pittsburgh. So for our gigantic story that we had there, I did a lot of the packages. I did a lot of the special opens. Um, basically, if you guys watch the morning show from 5 a.m. to noon, anything you'll see on there, I've had a hand in it. I've edited everything that's on that show, basically. So I edited a bunch of stuff for that. I got nominated out of nowhere. I didn't even realize I was nominated. Um, hilariously, whenever I got my nomination, the Emmy Award ceremony happens usually in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Mm. And I was at a Riverhounds game at the time when the <laughs> award ceremony was going on. So I was like, I'm not going to win. <laughs> who's gonna win it having for editing you know i'm not gonna win and as i was leaving the game which they won happily uh my old teacher who goes to the events regularly called me she's like you want an emmy i'm like that's that's funny no <laughs> that's cute <laughs> she's like no really and she showed me a picture of the screen with my name up there and i immediately regret that i wasn't there with a tux to give my speech yeah. for it but uh, i'll go again i've been nominated for several more uh last year i got nominated for three uh one zero of them who figured, right? <laughs> uh, ironically, Telemundo in Philly won like 75% of the Emmys this year. Really? For a TV and video production. Yeah. I don't know. Local, next, we'll get local, next year. Local Telemundo out of Philadelphia. Out of Philadelphia. Wow. Yeah. I, I think it's good for the fans, though. They, I'm sure they don't want to see me carry three of these around. No. <laughs> I, nor do I, because that's just too much. <laughs> so you do have you do have two of them, right? I do have two, yes. Yes. So it's, this is, are you, are you concerned? Like, I remember uh, when Kurt Angle, like, I, I think for a while he did come out with his actual um, gold medals. His gold medals, yes. But eventually, like, they made Fexil only one, so he didn't have any issues with them, mm-hmm. right? Uh, are, are you concerned about bringing a real Emmy? The more I do this, the more I get concerned. Okay. <laughs> when okay. I go to the boonies, I will most likely not bring a real Emmy. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I've been searching to try to find one that I can use that is not as real. I like carrying the real one with me. Yeah, um, it gives me a sense of authenticity. Right, with my character whenever I use it. But now that I'm using it in more spots, eh, probably it's time to look for something different. To yeah, use. yeah. I mean, that can be. I mean, things can happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, in the ring, you know, as much as you plan things out and everything, so mm, they're uh, easily replaceable, which is good. But I don't feel like paying that much. I mean, money there's no guardrail; them. like it's yeah. ever in the corner. I'm afraid I'm going to knock it over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> gives you great shots though, if you want. Them. Yes, that's, that's true. That is true. <laughs> but yes, I no longer have someone in my corner to protect the Emmy for me. <laughs> that's right. You need like a pallbearer or something to hold it for you. You I'm know, looking. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking. I've been searching. No one wants to be on my bandwagon right now. Apparently, I'm too mean. I don't know what that's about. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so you were, uh, what do we say, five matches deep into your career. Five matches deep, I think deep, I yes. filmed all of your matches. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. I love on the gifts, which, by the way, um, if you guys are ever on Giphy, Sorg has the greatest wrestling gifts you will ever see. I love seeing them every time, even from the other promotions. Mm-hmm. It's so great to see, like, especially um, you filmed uh, the Lucha, mm-hmm. the Lucha event that came through and seeing Pentagon Jr., and uh, Phoenix with their gifts was so cool to see. He always gets my pose, which is on my shirt, uh, perfectly every time. Um, yeah, it's so cool. It is so cool to see it. I love seeing you out there because it's more fun, especially for me to play off of cameras. Mm-hmm. And it's 
you do that so well. And I love to see that. And whenever I go over there, I'm like, come here, come here. And you zoom in and I run away. <laughs> it always makes me so happy. Uh, but yeah, five matches, you film them all. Um, they each get more and more ridiculous as they go along, mm -hmm. it seems. Uh, yeah. So, so tell me about your experience, like actually getting, you know, into the ring. Um, I think all but, all but one are, are singles matches. And, and, you know, going from being uh, uh, somebody that's ringside at the pulpit to like actually getting out there and performing in front of people. Uh, Brandon K. That's that's really the only good answer I can give. <laughs> uh, he is an absolute genius when it comes to wrestling. He's a perfect mm -hmm. trainer. He's been training me. I'm actually going there after this now to train with him again. Mm -hmm. um, he helped me get to where I am with the wrestling and figuring out how to go about doing things. Because I am too much of a perfectionist to do this by myself. I would never think that I was any good if I did. Uh, my first experience with wrestling was actually thanks to Chris Taylor. Uh, we did a benefit show with IWC. I cannot remember what the name of it was, but Rev was in a battle royal. I was out there in my pulpit gear, and his entrances are ridiculous, mm -hmm. as you've seen most of the time. And I remember this, that one. This was the Connors Cure one that was out. Yes, like, like kind of, kind of out uh, east of town. I, I forget what the town it was. Mm -hmm. but, yep, he was uh, in that, and they were just starting their rivalry. Um, I can't remember what our entrance was. I can't remember if it involved a dolly or me carrying him on my shoulders. I think no. that was the dolly. The dolly. The yeah. Yogg High School one was yeah. the one where he was on my shoulders because they wouldn't let us take a scaffolding with us. But um, he was in Battle Royal. I caught him. I got him back in. He got eliminated. My first bump in professional wrestling, I wasn't even in training yet, was a tailor cutter on a gym floor. Which I think is where I get my craziness from. I probably mm -hmm. got some PTSD. When from you start that. from that. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. start from that, what else are you going to do? Um, and also you, you fell off a cage yeah. at RWA. <laughs> Chris Taylor, again. Once again, Chris He's Taylor. Bane of my existence. Um, which, which was a, a slightly scary moment because, uh, it was a table that was brought out on dollies for a grand entrance for the Rev. <laughs> And oh, I believe man. they put the dolly underneath the table. Yeah. And so... it just sounded like death when you went through it. So I didn't know that it was underneath the table. Uh, when we were doing our entrance, we told them to kick the dolly underneath the ring. So both of them underneath the ring. I think one of them got kicked under the ring. One of them got kicked under the table. Mm -hmm. I'm too into the match to realize that there's something under there. So I crawl up. I think there might have been a, uh, a sheet over it or something. Too. Yeah, there was so a sheet over know. it. So you couldn't see what was underneath it. Uh, so we set the table under, um, we got to do our match. I go to the back. I come out for the cage spot, which is hilarious. Cause I didn't scale a cage before I did this, which is probably not what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Why not? I'm like, oh, there'll be footholds, no footholds. So I'm up there in dress shoes. This trying... isn't like the hell in the cells that you've seen over the years. Yes, where there's a yeah. foothold to climb that thing now. Trying to scale a cage in some slippery dress shoes. I would not recommend it to anybody, no. but I got to the top. And it's, I it, fell. It's it's like the 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 thing that brought you to the dance, the McFoley thing. He had never scaled that cage mm -hmm. before that. Ironic, moment. right? Yeah. Right? It seems like McFoley seems to have a definite hand in my relationship <laughs> with wrestling at this point. <laughs> and I just remember um, going up there, like eh, this is going to be a breeze, whatever. I have a high pain tolerance for these type of things, whatever. And when I landed, I remembered one impact. And then a second, which I thought was the floor, and then I finally landed on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> there was a loud crack, and I just lost all air in my body. <laughs> and I'm just laying there going, oh. <laughs> they come out, they're like, you okay? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm good. And I, all I remember after that was Phil Bad asking them to stretcher me out, which wasn't planned. And then I'm like, why? I was like, you broke a dolly too. Are you sure you're okay? I'm like, what dolly? <laughs> Um, I still have a piece of the dolly at my house. Actually, that broke. I kept that for sure. So after that, uh, actual just matches in a ring are easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can't do. I've taken suplexes on floors now. I've been... I mean, most of this happens with Rev, now that I think about it. All of my dangerous <laughs> spots. It's always Rev when it happens. Hey, hey why don't you do this? Sweet. <laughs> that sounds cool. One of these days, I'm going to learn. But yeah, when well, you're young. Yeah, I say you're few in here, uh, of course, performing um, on all the Uprise shows, which is the um, kind of the the next generation of Rise Wrestling, Rise mm -hmm. with a Y, down there in uh, Connellsville, uh, yes. uh, PA, Lamont Furnace, PA, south of Pittsburgh here. All, all available, of course, on the Indie Wrestling Network, mm -hmm. uh, at the IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. 
Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, you're, you've also had some appearances with Rise and, uh, the RWA too. So, so what, what are your, what are your, kind of your, uh, aspirations here? Where do you, you know, you're, you're just a little bit into this, like, where do you see yourself going in the next few years here? Um, I would love to be able to get on to obviously Rise. I love Rise with a burning passion. I love the show. I love everybody that's involved with it. I would love to do more stuff on Rise. Obviously I have to get throughout Rise to get there, but it's here and far between, um, I would love to be able to win a title in every promotion is what my first goal is. I have a lot of goals to get to there. That's my first step. I want to win a, a title in every single promotion that I wrestle for. Um, whether or not that'll happen, we'll see, but Hey, five matches in, we'll see what happens. Awesome. So what are you watching these days? That's kind of giving you inspiration or is, or is, or is there anybody else on the indies? That's like a character, character inspiration, a character inspiration or anything like that, like whatever's kind of. Mostly, your attention. mostly I've watched a lot of Bray Wyatt is where a lot of my moves come from. Mm -hmm. It's from Bray Wyatt. Um, I love doing his running back elbow. I also love taking aspects from Tetsuya Naito from uh, New Japan. His laid back attitude always makes me happy and just the get out of my way. I don't have time for this. I can do whatever I want. Um, as far as character goes, uh, My Hero Academia was a gigantic <laughs> um, aspiration for my character. Um, there's a character on the show named Bakugo who um, he thinks he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He has not had to do much. He's very overpowered. Um, he works hard for whatever he has, but he thinks that everybody else is beneath him. And whenever you watch the show, you will see a lot of the successful saying in there where he calls people extras and you side characters need to get out of my way. I'm the greatest thing ever. Get out of my way. So that's, that's basically what I've been doing. I watch a lot of Ring of Honor, a lot of New Japan. I get to watch Ring of Honor every day. Um, cause it comes on at two o'clock in the morning when I'm at work. Nice. So I get to watch it while I'm at work, which is the greatest thing ever. I love it. <laughs> You'll see it on my Facebook sometimes what wrestling and this. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, pretty, you know, pretty early in, but what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? Uh, the best thing about indie wrestling is that you have the opportunity to prove yourself. Uh, there's a lot more creativity involved into indie wrestling, at least in my opinion. Um, you hear stories about WWE, how they have to structure their matches based on what they want. Every move is planned, every spot, every camera angle where they position. I feel like indie wrestling gives a lot of people the creativity and the ability to do what they want more. Um, granted, you have your restrictions with time or whatever, but the ability to go out there and create something, even if it's for a handful of people, gives me a sense of pride and happiness whenever after a show, whenever I'm beating myself up, I'm like, my match sucked. I don't know what happened. And the person comes over, dude, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, you can't fight that feeling. A little bit of perspective for you. It's, yeah, it's definitely a bit of perspective. I mean, that's something I have to get over eventually, and I'm sure that'll come with confidence, but it's so cool to, to have that happen even now. Awesome. And the worst thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, Going through three things off a cage. <laughs> yeah, three things off a cage. Um, at least in my earlier aspect of my career before I started, the worst thing was politics mm -hmm. uh, that I saw. Um, I like to consider myself a positive person. So um, whenever there's negativity around, I don't like to stick around with that, which is one of the reasons why I'm at Rise. Um, couple of places I've been had a lot of negativity surrounding them at the time, which have gotten better. And I'm so proud to see that. And I'm happy for that. But sometimes politics, I feel, gets in the way and egos gets in the way of a lot of things. Granted, I don't have a lot of experience in indie wrestling at this time. Mm -hmm. As you said, I'm five matches in. So maybe I'm not at place to talk about it. But I feel like egos um, can sometimes hurt not only the product itself, but them themselves as well. So I try to go into every match, every moment that I do, thinking about not just me. How can I elevate my opponent? How can I elevate mm -hmm. everybody else around me um, in any way that I can, whether it be through promos, whether it be through editing or filming, whatever I can do. I just try to better everybody else around me. That's awesome. It's been really cool. I, I say one of the positive um, um, people I get to work with here, and, and there's been that trend lately, mm -hmm. like I said, with Rise and, and a lot of people involved you know, that are, are, are touching, you know, several aspects of the product, mm -hmm. and, you know, whether that be media backstage agenting, I'm seeing more and more, 
uh, readily at these shows that I don't remember mm-hmm. seeing five years ago. At yeah, these shows. yeah. Um, even Marcus Mann sometimes he'll call me out for a coffee every yeah. once in a while just to talk about how I'm doing. What can we do to do anything better? Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I gravitate towards Rise is there's it's like not for a cliched word. It, it's a family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they believe in inclusion for everybody. They believe in putting on the best show that they can for the fans, mm-hmm. and not only for the fans, but for themselves. Um, they believe in giving you pride in your work. Um, Brandon K drills that in our heads all the time. Have fun out there. You know, you don't know what the next day is going to bring. Yep. Have fun out there whenever you wrestle. Absolutely. Give them something to come back for, and give yourself something to come back to. That's great. Right, where can people find you online? Online. Um, I have a Twitter, uh, 412J Styles. I'm not on there as much. I apologize. I am on Facebook a lot, though. You can follow the successful saint on Facebook, uh, see my antics and all of my anger issues that are shown out on that page. <laughs> uh, Instagram, J Styles 412 as well. There's a lot of personal and wrestling stuff involved in that as well. Excellent. Go check him out. Like I said, he's part of Uprise. A little bit of Rise in RWA. You can see some of the big, the big falls. Mm-hmm. Over there, uh, as part of over at IndieWrestling.us and the Indie Wrestling Network. And, of course, uh, please keep an eye out for all the Rise and Uprise shows that you're involved with. And you'll see some some of your work uh, uh, there as well on the media platforms. So many falls. <laughs> so, many falls. <laughs> so many falls. So many big knees to the face. So many people jumping on me. Yeah. One day I'll do the jumping. One day. One day. <laughs> One day the jumping will be his. <laughs> Go check them out. Thank you so much for joining us here on the show. And thank you, everybody, joining us here in the chat room live at IndieWrestling.us, Facebook, and everywhere else. Please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show so you can catch all of our interviews, including our past ones. Recently uh, just announced our good friend DJ Z, who just uh, officially that announced so his cool sign to WWE. Yeah. Uh, we just talked to coming. him a couple weeks ago here in the studio here when he was in town and just seeing his last match in IWC. So real cool to see that. You never know. Brother Jordan might be uh, up there someday as well. Maybe that'll be uh, a maybe that'll be a slammy in his hand instead of an Emmy. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, please, until next time, support. <laughs> this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.